Now last week I spoke about how important it is for me after Inktober to continue my daily painting and drawing and this is because if I stop drawing for a few days I find it really hard to get back into that habit of making time to be creative and being creative is so useful for so many reasons everybody needs a little bit of time every day to themselves even if it's only 10 or 15 minutes just find a time in your day when you can be alone be quiet and just do something relaxing and for me my painting and my, my drawing is just something that I love doing so much and many times over my life I haven't fitted in the time I haven't made time and it's only when you actually make time for that daily drawing that you realise how much you've missed being creative. Now when I was at art college many years ago I did works experience with an art therapist in a hospital and I learned a lot from the therapist and I also learned a lot from the, the patients at the hospital who were taking part in the art therapy lessons and many of them were old, they had chronic pain, they had quite bad disabilities some of them, many of them had depression and nearly all of them told me they have never painted before and they were you know that 60s, 70s, 80s and they'd never picked up a pencil or painted for fun but they went to these sessions, many of them joined quite reluctantly but they soon found out that they were having a good time and they looked forward to these sessions. Now it's so much easier today because we have internet, there's online workshops, there's artists giving demonstrations, there is so much interest and there are so many things that you can, you don't even have to go to the library to get a book, you just go onto the internet, go onto YouTube um, and you can just see what people are creating and it's so lovely to see so much artwork out there but don't be intimidated it doesn't matter if you're not good it's just so long as you're enjoying what you're doing so if you've got anxiety or depression you've got chronic pain you've got stress in your life for whatever reason really I would encourage you to try and be creative in some way it doesn't have to be painting or drawing some people like to knit or crochet or they do woodwork um, there's all sorts of hobbies that you can do that are creative um, some people make pots and clay models there's lots of things but I'm talking about painting and drawing because that's what I like to do so I think what we need to think about as well is what time of day is a good time for you. F secondly, don't do too much in one go. Don't feel you've got to do a big picture and finish it in one day. It's much better to spend 10 or 15 minutes once or twice a day and to enjoy what you're doing, to not feel rushed and to not get overtired because if you get very tired or you're being rushed or your people are hassling you to do something else you're going to make mistakes and then you're not going to be happy and then it's going to put you off coming back and finishing your picture and so finding a place where you can be quiet and undisturbed that everybody knows this is your time and you're going to just have 10 or 15 minutes and not to be disturbed unless there's an emergency that's really important stick to your little routine if it helps you it, I find it's helpful to have time in the evening when everyone else is going off doing their own things where I can just sit quietly in my room and just doodle and do a little bit of painting and drawing so try and do that make your little space there's a ways around it if you don't have a permanent space and it's hard if you've got little children as well that you have to keep them away from your pens and paints so we'll talk about making a little space in another video but I think just don't be intimidated by the blank piece of paper just don't worry about it you get everyone makes mistakes lots of times we can correct the mistakes it's not a major problem we start off with some equipment that's not too expensive but good quality. Always better to have good quality. I'm going to get out before next week some things to show you that will be great for starting off. And we're going to just continue to work through of how I do things and I'm going to be obviously talking about people who influence me and I'll be um, advising you of some ways to get started if you just really can't 
get that motivation going. But I'm just going to show you what I did on the last week. I thought, must throw myself into a project. I've got this Reeves um, sketchbook where the, co the cover's a canvas and you paint it yourself. Now, I've looked at it loads of times and I thought, oh, do you know what, I must do that sketchbook. And I just didn't get round to it. And I was tidying up after Inktober and I thought, stop putting it off, stop thinking about it and just do it because lots of people spend too long thinking and not enough time actually being creative and I am quite guilty of that myself. So I just got my sketchbook out and I just drew some designs that I thought I'd like to incorporate on the cover. I got a sharpie pen and drew the outlines and then I got some Posca paint markers which are really great. There's a little knack, you need to practice using them because the paint is quite runny but it dries permanent. But you can paint over if you make mistakes once it's dry. So I just got some lovely bright colours, this reminds me of the 60s and the pop art and all the bright colours. And I just had fun with this, I made quite a few mistakes. I waited till the paint dried, I went over them and then I thought, you know what, doesn't really matter. If no one likes it, it doesn't matter. I just had fun doing it. And I put the detail in with the um, Sharpie pen when it was all dry. And I really didn't think too much. I just would draw in lines and dots wherever. And then I I just sort of just carried on until I felt I'd done enough. And this is where it's good to take a break and not do it all in one go because you can come back and you can see if something needs altering if you don't like it and I didn't want to overdo it and make it like every single colour covered in, in lines I wanted to have some blocks of colour as well so that's what I did with the front cover and that took me a few days because I've got a couple of coats of paint on to cover up my mistakes and um, I didn't want to rush it because there's a lot in there and I didn't want it to look totally crazy which some people might think it is but it was fun and then I went ahead and did, when the first side was totally dry, I did the second side. Now I worked totally differently for this. I didn't think at all. I just got my Sharpie pen in the middle, drew a spiral, and then just kept drawing shapes and curves and lines until I'd filled up the cover. And I really enjoyed doing this. I liked the fact that on the first side I could see that the um, Posca pens were bleeding into each other but I didn't want that effect on the first side so I kept correcting it but on this side I let the colours, I took two shades of each of the four colours and I let them bleed into each other and I really like that effect where the paint runs and bleeds into each other, it creates some movement and it's just totally relaxing so I've got a totally different type of picture to the front cover so the front cover is much more sort of um, I've had to think a bit more about it make sure I get the right colours in the right places with this all I'm worrying about is using two colours and just letting them run into each other so I love the second side, I like the first side but I had a lot more fun doing this and this is where you need to experiment with your surfaces, your pens and using pens and um, coloured pencils it's so good if you don't have a lot of time because you haven't got to worry about your paints drying out you've just got to put the lid back on the pen and then you're packed up and ready to go you don't have to worry about washing out palettes and Things. It's just so easy if you're starting out to work with pens and coloured pencils. So anyway, I will talk more next week about a basic kit for starting out where you can get some good quality um, equipment that doesn't cost too much and creating your own little workspace. So I hope you're enjoying um, what we're doing so far. Motivation is hard, so I will be talking about that um, sort of a lot quite a lot in the weeks to come because it's very hard to keep going when you don't feel well or when there is so much going around you but I know so many people who really benefit from it this little bit of escapism of just going away from their daily problems so I will see you all again soon and um, if you want to see little bit more about what I've been doing go over to the Facebook page where I'm trying to put pictures up most days not every day but I'm trying to get a little bit of information out there of just what I'm doing and how far I'm getting with everything.